Guys, it is dreary. It is getting cold. It is getting windy. I can start to feel some rain. So for a contrast of colors, look what we just pulled out of the pond. A gorgeous, gorgeous common carp. Look at that. Beautiful red and yellow tail and fins all up and down. Those two barbels. This one kind of stuck to the side of his mouth. There you go. Two barbels for sensory perception and the best part of all these beautiful golden scales. If this is not a contrast of colors, the best kind of contrast of colors, then I don't know what is. I'm super happy right now. Not just because this carp took my bait and I got him in the net, but because we caught him on my favorite ground bait and we caught him in about 10 minutes, which if you're carp fishing, that's pretty good. So if you wanna know how I turned this into this, keep watching, because I'm gonna show you how to make my personal favorite recipe, not patented, not special, probably not even original. Someone came up with it somewhere ground bait that I like to use. You're gonna see that. So keep watching while this guy swims away. Here you go. Got a fish cam. And he's off. Whoosh. Follow me back inside to the kitchen and we'll start making some ground bait. Alright guys, so let me show you how to make that ground bait that I've been using with so much success. Now a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, this is most certainly not an original recipe. I'm sure someone somewhere has, has mixed these exact items and had you know relatively the same amount of success that I'm having. This is not a secret recipe. Number two, although it works incredibly well, it does have its limitations, and I'll share that as we go along. Certain ingredients kind of inherently handicap it in certain parts of fishing, but for what I use it for, it works incredibly well. I have a lot of success with it. I've caught a lot of fish with it. I think you will too. So let me show you the ingredients that I like to use. All right, for starters, basic plain white bread. Now, as you have figured out by now, I am a huge advocate of fishing as cheap as possible. Now, that statement has caveats that come with it. If you wanna go out and catch a bluefin tuna or a you know, white marlin, you're gonna to have to spend a lot of money. But if you're like me and you're just as happy going out to a creek or a pond or a lake and catching some carp, you can get bait, effective bait, uh, for a very, very little amount of money. So this bread here cost me about 88 cents. Now, I like to use white bread because, as I'll show you in a minute, the consistency of white bread as opposed to wheat or whole grain bread is much better for what I'm gonna do with this. I don't eat it, but the fish do. All right, ingredient number two eggs. Don't care what kind of eggs you use and I don't think the fish care either. It doesn't matter if you get goose eggs, turkey eggs, if you can even get turkey eggs from the store, chicken eggs, whatever. Get yourself some eggs. They'll all work for our bait today. All right, number three, canned corn. Now this is heralded by many as the carp bait. You know, it, it, assuming we're not talking about boilies and things like that, if you're just going to the grocery store for some cheap bait, Sweet corn is hard to beat, and it's gonna play a big part in this bait today. Now you'll notice this does not say sweet corn, it just says whole kernel corn. If it's sweet corn, whole kernel corn that isn't particularly sweetened, doesn't matter for ground bait, I find it works the same. Play with your own recipes. You know, if I walk into the store and it says whole kernel, sweet corn, I'll pick that up, I'll buy that. This was the cheapest one on the shelf, so I grabbed that. 44 cents, put that right there. The eggs, by the way, are about $1.77. All right, the last component of this bait, as far as materials go, oatmeal. Again, doesn't matter if it's name brand, you know, your regular Kroger brand, H-E-B brand, whatever it is, Sam's Club brand, if there is one, get yourself some oatmeal. Don't cook it. You want it uncooked, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. So the four components of our bait, oatmeal, corn, eggs, bread. Couldn't be easier, right? So let's mix it together. There's a particular way I like to do this. All right, step number one, take the bread. You're gonna take out individual pieces of bread and keep in mind, there are faster ways to do what I'm about to show you. If you can use a food processor or a Cuisinart, this will probably take you know, a fifth the amount of time. But let me show you how I do it because if you're doing this bank side, you're not gonna have that stuff with you. So plain white bread, remember I said I like the consistency of white bread over wheat bread. It's because it breaks apart easier. 
wheat bread is much tougher, which makes a better hook bait. Keep that in mind. But white bread flakes apart very, very easy. It's very flaky bread. And that's good because what you do is you take this piece of bread over your bowl and you almost do like you're trying to warm your hands up. You just go back and forth real fast and watch it's just going to crumble down into this bowl. You do this really quick, watch beneath my hands. You see it, yeah, just falling apart. Now you got to be careful because you end up getting this stuff all over your girlfriend's countertops. And you have to explain that. But this is the finished result. Just this ground up white bread. Now you can make this to the consistency that you want, but generally what I try to do, these bigger pieces, these big spongier pieces, the first couple of pieces of this loaf that I use, I try to get it as fine as possible. I try to get it all ground up. And then at the end of it, I will let some of that slide because that does help you use this ground bait on a hook if you decide to smush some on a hook. Those bigger spongier pieces are great for that. But I wanna control exactly how much of that ends up in here. And for me, just me personally, I find it's easier to do that if I leave the big parts in near the end. Try not to knock the bowl over every time you move your hands. Now a good way to check the consistency of your bread once you're done grinding it up is to just sift it through your fingers and it should fall through just like that. Now I would recommend you keep a few bigger, doughier pieces like this, the kind that if you just hold them out, they'll hold their shape like that, really thick and spongy. That is what will help you make hook baits out of your ground bait. Not a lot of people do this, but I find it's incredibly effective. If you just think about it, you are drawing the fish in with your ground bait. They are there to eat your ground bait. So why not have your hook with your ground bait? Next ingredient is oatmeal. I've seen God. Now, I kind of go with the Jamie Oliver school of thought in the sense that I don't really accurately measure out any of my ingredients. I just kind of make every single one a judgment call. So what I'll do, and remember I like to use bags, so I took our bowl, poured it into a bag, and then the rest I just spilled on the cabinet. So here's our clear bag with our bread in it. I'm gonna pour in the oatmeal next because I wanna get all my, all my grains in there together because this is the dry part of the bait. And I'm gonna judge how much of the, the wet part of the bait, how much of the liquid part of the bait to put in based upon how it starts to mix with the dry stuff. So put both your dry ingredients together and I think it makes it easier to mix. Also, if you've got a Ziploc bag, instead of taking a spoon and stirring it in a bowl or getting your hands dirty, you can put it in a bag and just do this. If you have ever made ice cream as a child in a bag, same thing. And like that, it's mixed. Now, oatmeal is essential to a good ground bait, in my opinion, because what it does, especially if it's uncooked, it expands when it comes into contact with the water that you cast it into, and it flakes away from the central ball of ground bait that you make. So it starts to break away first, and that is the first thing that draws in small fish. They will start picking the oatmeal out first. That gets a feeding activity going in that area, and that's what draws the attention of other fish. Now, a ground bait will work without oatmeal, but I find it works quicker with it. All right, so let's add some corn. Now, this is a wet bait. Corn is packed in water, so when you start pouring this in, a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, there's a lot of juice in here that's gonna spill into this bag. I like to mix pure liquids very, very last. So usually I'll pour some of, not all, but some of the juice out, maybe to a separate container if you wanna save it, or I'll just pour it into the water source I'm gonna fish, get that sodium, that smell, that corn scent in the water. Don't waste it. Anyway, I'm gonna pour a little bit of this corn in here. Always keep a good can opener with you. Do not try to use a knife to open the lid. Don't even try to use one of the uh, you know, manual can openers that just has the little triangle point because you basically make a ninja star out of the lid and you will cut your hand on it. They make really good can openers, just simple manual can openers that actually cut around the outside of the can. So when you pop the top off, it, you can't cut yourself on it unless you're really, really dumb. All right, mix it, mix it, mix it, mix it. Now this is where the bag comes in handy, because as you begin to mix the liquid and grain parts of your bait together, 
you can start to feel the consistency of what it's going to become. So you'll notice some of it starting to stick together near the top of it there. It'll fall together. It doesn't just fall in little grainy patterns. It falls in a little bit of grain and then big clumps like that one right there. So I'm actually going to put in a little bit more corn. And then what I'm going to do, after I mix it up, is add in that final ingredient that's going to pack it and bind it together. Make it that sticky, pasty substance that we want so that it doesn't just break away in a current and flow away and never draw that fish in. You want a ground bait that you can keep fish in one area, so it's gotta break down kinda slowly. So that ingredient is our eggs. Now, you would not believe the amount of debate that goes on over whether or not you should put the shell in your ground bait. People will argue over the silliest stuff. Here's my philosophy. If it catches fish, do it. If it's easy and catches fish, do it. For me, I do include the shell simply because it adds just a little more structure to make that ground bait hold together. I personally like that. If you don't like it, don't use the shell, but I do. So another good reason to use the shell for me is that when you're fishing bank side making your ground bait in a bag, I can just drop the egg in the bag, seal it up. And by the way, when you seal it up, I want to show you something real quick. So let's take our egg out. Make sure you have plenty of air in the bag when you seal it if you're going to mix it because you want room for that bait to fall back and forth. Watch what happens if I take all the air out of this bag. This is how I would seal it if I was trying to keep it for a long time. If I was storing it and I didn't want oxygen to start breaking it down, I would seal it like this. But watch when I try to mix it. It just does not work. You will spend way too much time trying to squeeze it back and forth. So just give yourself plenty of air in there. Open it up nice and wide, get your materials in there, and then draw it closed with a big air pocket inside. Now you can just simply do this right here. You can just kind of mix the egg right in the center and just smack it like that. Just make sure you don't explode your bag. The bigger the bag, the easier it is to do that. You can see the yolk there where I broke it. What's wrong? Tessie, the dog is so upset right now. Tessie, come here, come here. Come here, I want to show you to everybody. This is Tessie. Say hello. Say hello to everyone on YouTube. Hello. Go play. Anyway, mix the egg in there. And this is where you're going to start to knead it. Is that the right word? Knead it? Do you need it? Do you really need it? Or do you just want it? Or do you want to knead it? My first martial arts instructor, uh, who introduced me to Taekwondo, used to know this person who would walk around the gym and just do this, and then say, I need you. All right, one last tip. When you're mixing your bait, let's say you're almost ready, but you want to put more liquid in there. First thing I would do is use the juice from your corn, but let's say you're out. You could mix in another egg, but let's say you don't have any of those either, or maybe you want to save both of these. Save these for later, save these for hook baits. There's two things you can do and one thing you should never do. Let's talk about that one thing you should never do first. Don't ever, ever, ever use sink water because it's full of chlorine, which helps us, but it doesn't draw in fish. You can use a flavored soda like this one. Generally, fruit flavors are the best. Reds, blues, things like that. I like this one because it's sugar-free, and they used to be the official energy drink of the UFC, so you could, you could get these with pictures of Ronda Rousey on there, or John Jones, or Vanderlei Silva, and then they stopped partnering with the UFC, and look what happened to all three of those people. So, anyway, you can mix in a, a carbonated soda. Uh, I hear great things about big red soda, so at least the fish like it. The second thing you can do, and this might be easier for you if you're not packing around random bottles of soda, or random cans of soda, is just get some of the water from the exact source that you're fishing. Because what are the fish gonna be more used to than the water that you're fishing? All right, so get yourself a handful of ground bait, squeeze it together in a nice compact sphere. I don't like making these too big. I like making them a little bit larger than a golf ball. Nice and sticky, but not so much that it leaves ground bait stuck to whatever it touches. I can roll it around in my hand 
throw it out, and it all stays together. Once it lands in the water, it starts to break apart. And that's about it. There's not a whole lot to this. Simple ingredients, not anything I've made up on my own, just stuff that I've decided works incredibly well when mixed together in the right proportions. Go out, you've got $6, you can buy all these ingredients. You can make a whole lot more ground bait than this. And you can freeze it too. It, this keeps incredibly well. I have used ground bait fresh, caught carp. I've used ground bait from the freezer for days, caught carp. I have left it in my car where it fermented and made the whole place smell terrible hot carp. So a really good bait no matter what conditions you have, although I, I recommend you freeze it and don't leave it in your car. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I hope you like the ground bait. I hope you like the video. It works for me. It'll work for you. It's not a long distance bait. It doesn't work in a PVA bag because it's got so much water mixed in with it. But if you're a margin fisherman like me or you're tossing your ground bait within 150, 200 feet, depending on how good your throwing arm is, this stuff is killer. So make yourself some, go out and try it, let me know what you catch, post a picture. If you've got a recipe for ground bait that you like, share it with me. I would love to give it a try and see what works for you, see if it works for me too. I'll go out there and try to catch some more fish with my ground bait. Let me know if you catch any fish with it. Until then, I'll see you guys later.